In this video we're going to look at putting a T-piece into a rigid copper pipe. This can be difficult to do. I once had to do this a few years ago and there was actually a boiler at the top and at the bottom it was concreted into a concrete floor. So you couldn't actually move the pipe at all. If you need to put a T-piece in there, you can't actually move those pipes because they are rigid. So that does make it extremely difficult to put a fitting in like that, even if it's a compression fitting. You do need some movement to be able to get a new fitting in a pipe like that. So the way you do it is by using a slip coupling. That is a normal coupler, that is a solder ring fitting coupler. If we take a piece of copper pipe and push that in there, it will actually physically stop. Where that line is there, there is actually a stop in the fitting and that prevents you from pushing the pipe all the way through. The same goes for an end feed coupler that has a stop in the centre and the same goes for a compression fitting. You can only actually push the pipe halfway in, that is so that you always make a good joint. In instances where you need to join into something like that you're going to need a slip coupler. The slip coupler looks like that and there actually is no stop in the centre of it so that means that you can push the pipe all the way through like so. You are going to need two of these to make the joint work. So what we need to do is cut a section of that out and then we need to use a slip coupler at the top and at the bottom and then in the middle there we will have our T-piece coming out. There is quite a lot of work involved in doing this but it is probably the only way you can actually join into a pipe that is rigid that you can't move. Another problem with pipes like that is you can't actually get the pipe slice in because there is no room. That is actually clipped in position in a couple of places so we cannot actually move that pipe. So we're going to have to cut through that using a hack saw. to get the blade out now so I'm just going to have to loosen that off. It is important when you do this that you leave enough room. What you don't want to do is make it too small and have to cut the pipe again. So we're now going to make the second cut. If you can't get in with the deburring tool you can use a piece of abrasive paper. So they are now burr free, we're just going to check a fitting on there, you can see that, that goes on there easily and also on that end. We're now going to use the piece of copper pipe that we took out and the overall length needs to be 14 and a half centimetres roughly and we're going to put that T piece in the middle there. Every time I make a cut with the pipe slice I'm going to deburr it using the deburring tool. So we can now push that part into the fitting. I'll cut that to length with the pipe slice. So I can now push that in there. You can see that we've got the exact correct length. So I'm now cutting the last piece. And that is going to go in that part of the T. Because the slip couplings can slide all the way down the pipe, like so, it's a good idea to put a mark on to ensure that you get them in the correct place. The last thing you want is it to slip down like that and not make a good joint. So a good way of doing that is to get a normal coupler like so with a stop in, push that on there and then we can put a mark using a permanent marker and we know exactly where that fitting needs to be and I'm actually just going to mark it on the wood there. 
and I'm going to do the same with the top. When you fit this piece you can actually do all the soldering in one go or you can solder the T piece first which will make it a little bit easier. So in this example I'm just going to solder this part first. So just like I did before I'm going to clean all of the copper pipe up using the scotch bright pad. We'll also clean the other ends up as well because they're going to be soldered shortly. It's also a good idea if you have an old fitting to cut a piece of scotch bright pad and just clean the inside of the fitting. This one is actually brand new so there's no need to do that. I'm then going to take a flux brush and I'm going to apply some flux to each of the pieces of copper. Once we've done that we can then push that into the fitting. We can then just check we've got the pipes the correct way around before we solder it. I'm not just going to use a paper towel to wipe off any of the excess flux. I'm then just going to stand that up in a fitting just so that we can solder it. I'm not just going to apply some heat to that until the solder exits from the fitting. So if you take a look at that you can see that we've got solder exiting from all three parts of the T. If you're not familiar with solder ring fittings these are a superb way of joining copper pipe and they actually have the solder built into the fitting so they are very very easy to use. Obviously for professional plumbers they'll probably use something like that which is called an end feed fitting and if you use these you do have to use additional solder. So that is now cool enough to touch. We now just need to apply some flux to those two parts. I'm now going to apply the flux to the two pipes. We can now take the slip couplings. We'll just slide those down. And then I'm going to slide the fitting all the way up there. Like so. And then I'm going to insert the pipe. I'm going to move the bottom slip coupling up and the top slip coupling down. You will remember that earlier I put a mark on there so we need to get the bottom of the slip coupling level with that. So the top one just needs to come down a bit more. So we've got the two slip couplings in the exact correct position aligned with the two marks. We now just need to remove any excess flux. Because we're soldering the timber and plasterboard I'm just going to use the heat mat. I'm just going to tape that in position to prevent anything from getting scorched or set on fire. So again all we need to do is take the blowtorch and apply a little bit of heat to each of the fittings. You can remove the heat once you see the solder exiting from the fitting. So that's how to put a T piece into a rigid copy pipe. You can now connect 
another fitting on there. You can do whatever you want with that. It is a good idea to flush out the pipe, obviously, before you use it to get rid of the flux, etc. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. If you have and you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel.